Have you ever wondered what would have happened if, at the bridge of Khazad Doom, Gandalf the Grey was packing a double-barreled super shotgun instead of that wimpy wizard staff? Do you think it would be better if Geralt of Rivia, instead of having a steel sword for humans and a silver sword for monsters, had two handguns for everything, and then dove through the air firing them in slow motion while flights of doves took off in the background? Well, if so, have I got a video for you. Today on D6 Damage, I'm breaking down the rules for firearms in Pathfinder 1E. By the time we're done, you'll be laughing and blasting so long that even the paladin will think that your mind has gone. But before we begin, if you're in need of a Pathfinder 1E adventure, check out Sorceress, the Dietrich House. Designed for a party of four level 3 characters, this adventure has sinister mysteries, unsolved crimes, and a haunted house with lurking terrors to challenge your players. As well as unexpected treasures, courtesy of the dynamic and thematic loot system, which will make for unique and compelling rewards for those willing to brave the depths of the Dietrich House. Available right now on DriveThruRPG. Now then. Let's break down the rules for firearms in Pathfinder 1E. To begin with, in order to use firearms, there is a feat requirement. You need the exotic weapon proficiency for firearms. This gives you proficiency with all firearms. Now, if you have a firearm and you're not proficient in using it, you take a minus four penalty on all attack rolls. This is normal for using a weapon that you are not proficient with. But, as firearms will in Pathfinder 1E, there are additional complications on top of that. You increase the weapon's misfire chance by 4. Let me give you an example. A pistol, ordinarily, has a misfire chance of 1. If you are not proficient with it, it increases the miss chance to a 5 or lower. So, if you make your attack roll with a pistol that you are not proficient with, and your roll is on the die... 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, you misfire and automatically don't hit your target. In addition, your pistol would gain the broken condition. This imposes a minus 2 penalty on all attack and damage rolls. Also, you can only crit on a natural 20, and you only have a times 2 critical multiplier. In addition, your broken firearm has increased its miss chance by 4, but... Only two if you have gun training. This is a 5th level gunslinger class feature. Going back to our example, if you are untrained with a pistol and it's broken, you have a missed chance of 9. And if for some reason you still try to fire it and you misfire, which is increasingly likely, your weapon will explode. If your weapon explodes, you pick a corner of your square for the explosion to emanate from. The exploding weapon then deals damage to everything within its radius. Different weapons have different explosion radii. The explosion does damage as if the weapon had hit. It's a reflex DC-12 to half the damage of the explosion. Also note, advanced firearms do not explode if misfired. Now, let's talk about loading your firearm. You need one hand free to load a one- or two-handed firearm. Reloading a firearm provokes attacks of opportunity. It's a standard action to reload a one-handed firearm, and it's a full round action to reload a two-handed firearm. Now, if you're planning on specializing in firearms, I would highly recommend the Rapid Reload feat. With this feat, you pick one type of one-handed or two-handed firearms, such as pistol, pepper box, musket, that kind of thing. It is a move action to reload one-handed firearms, and it's a standard action to reload two-handed firearms. However, reloading still provokes attacks of opportunity. Also note, advanced firearms are chamber-loaded. It's a move action to reload a one-handed or two-handed advanced firearm. Rapid reload reduces this to a free action. The next thing you need to understand about firearms is capacity. Capacity is the number of shots your firearm can hold at one time. A pistol has a capacity of 1, a pepper box a capacity of 6, a double-barreled hackbutt a capacity of 2. 
In any round of combat, you may make as many shots as you have attacks until you have to reload. And if you can reload quickly enough, you can continue to attack after reloading, provided you have the attacks, that is. Another very important aspect of firearms is range and penetration. Early firearms within the first range increment, that's 20 feet for pistols, 40 feet for muskets, and 10 feet for buckler guns, as an example, these attacks resolve against your target's touch AC. However, these are not considered touch attacks for the purposes of feats like deadly aim. Outside of the first range increment, AC applies as normal, as well as the normal range increment penalties for firing outside of your range. Another thing to be aware of, early firearms have a maximum range of 5 increments. As an example, your pistol would not be able to hit a target that was 105 feet away from you. Now, advanced firearms resolve on touch within the first 5 range increments, and have a maximum range of 10 range increments. Now, let's move on to ammunition. You have many interesting options. The most basic ones are bullets. This is your basic ammunition. There's nothing special about it. It will cost you one gold piece. Another option is a pitted bullet. This is the only kind of bullet that can be poisoned. The poisoned must be specially prepared before it's applied to the round. This requires a special craft alchemy check equal to the poison's craft DC plus four. Using a poison in this manner reduces its save DC by two. A pitted bullet will cost you five gold pieces, poison not included. If putting as many rounds downrange as possible is what matters to you, I would highly recommend paper alchemical cartridges. These reduce the reload time by one step. A full round action becomes a standard action. Standard goes to move, and move goes to free. As an example, if you have the rapid reload feat for your pistol and alchemical cartridges, your reload time is reduced from a standard to a move action, then from a move action to a free action. There is, however, a penalty when using alchemical cartridges. They increase the misfire chance by one. The cost of a paper alchemical cartridge is 12 gold pieces. Now, let's talk about Dragon's Breath rounds. Instead of normal rounds, your weapon produces 2d6 of non-magical fire damage. Dragon's Breath rounds function only with scatter weapons, those being the Dragon Pistol and the Blunderbuss. The area of effect is equal to the weapon's scatter radius. It's a DC 15 to half the damage from the fire. Now, unlike normal firearms, the mischance occurs whenever you roll a 1 on either of the weapon's damage die. Dragon Breath rounds will cost 40 gold pieces. The final thing you should be aware of about firearms is that the majority of them do both bludgeoning and piercing damage. This can be important for overcoming the DR of certain enemies. Finally, let's talk about the availability of firearms in your Pathfinder campaign setting. Each dungeon master has to decide the level of availability in regard to firearms. There are several levels. The first one is no guns. Guns do not exist in this setting. These would be more primitive or traditional fantasy settings, such as those found in Lord of the Rings or Conan the Barbarian. Next, very rare guns. The gunslinger class, the amateur gunslinger feat, and associated archetypes that use it do not yet exist in this setting. Only early firearms are available, and only NPCs may take the gunsmithing feat. This would be similar to the later books in the Wheel of Time series, when the various characters and factions are just beginning to weaponize black powder. Next, Emerging Guns. This is the baseline for gunslinger rules and ammo prices in Pathfinder. Early firearms are available, but rare. The gunsmithing feat is necessary for players that want to make guns a feasible weapon. Advanced firearms may exist, but they're rare rewards for high-level campaigns. To give you an idea of pricing, a pistol would be 
1,000 gold pieces, and ammo would be 1 gold piece. Considering this is the baseline for guns in Pathfinder, their official setting Galarian is the archetypal example of emerging guns. Next, Commonplace Guns. With Commonplace Guns, all firearms are martial weapons. All early firearms and ammunition cost 25% of their default price. Your early pistol would cost you 250 gold pieces, and ammo would cost 2 silver and 5 copper per round. Advanced firearms are still rare and cost their default prices. The final level of availability is guns everywhere. DACA, as far as the eye can see. Early and advanced firearms count as simple weapons. All firearms are bought or crafted for 10% of their default price. That pistol will only cost 100 gold now, and ammo will be one silver piece per round. Finally, the Gunslinger class loses the Gunsmithing class feature and instead gains gun training at first level. Thank you very much for watching this guide to firearms in Pathfinder 1E from D6 Damage. If you're interested in books and accessories for Pathfinder, D&D, or any other tabletop RPG, check out Noble Knight Games by looking at the affiliate link down in the description. Also, if you're interested in a haunted house adventure, check out Sorceress the Dietrich House on DriveThruRPG. And if you'd like to see D6 Damage videos early, check out our BitChute channel and be the first ones to see the latest D6 Damage content. Finally, if you'd like to take your game further, join the D6 Damage Discord. We have fantastic discussions about all aspects of the game, from character builds to RP and much, much more.